I love React hooks, but they are pretty confusing to look at, and when you're first learning them, they're definitely not obvious. So in this small mini-series, I'm going to be covering all of the different React hooks you need to know, and talking about them in a way that's really easy for you to understand, so you can start using hooks immediately. And if you want a more in-depth look into React, make sure to check out my full React course, I'll link down in the description below. So in this first video, I'm going to cover use state, which is probably the most important React hook. Let's get started now. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name's Kyle, and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. So if that sounds interesting, make sure you subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this one. Now to get started with this video, all I've done is run the command npx create react app just like this, and this actually creates all of the boilerplate code you need for a React application, and all I've done is strip out pretty much everything that we don't need, so all that we're left with is this really simple app component, which has a minus button, a span in the middle, which displays our count, and then this plus button. Right now, there's no functionality for this at all, and we're going to add in all of the counter functionality that we need by using the use state hook inside of React. So all you need to do is run npx create react app and then when that's done you can just come into your app component here and start modifying the code inside of it directly and then just run npm start and that'll start up the application over here for us so let me just drag over what it started as you can see here and right now i can click plus minus nothing actually works yet so to get started with implementing this functionality the first thing we need to do is import the hook we're going to use so with react what we can do is just destructure out here by putting these curly brackets here and we want to import the use state portion which is just a single hook that we're going to be importing from react and now inside of our function here we can use this use state hook but there's a few gotchas related to hooks that you need to understand first and if you already understand how hooks work and you just want to understand the use state hook you can skip ahead to the timestamp that i'll put down in the description or i'll probably show it on the screen for you but essentially i want to explain the got you's that you need to understand before you can start using hooks. And the first most important thing is that you can only use hooks inside of function components. You cannot use them in class components. So you must be using a function component to use a hook. As you can see here, we have a app component, which is a function component, so we can use hooks. But if we, for example, had, you know, class app extends, you know, react.component, we could not use the use state hook inside of here because classes already have their own way to do the same things that hooks do. So make sure you're using a function component. And the other important thing that you must understand is that every time your component runs, so this function runs, your hooks must execute in the exact same order. That means, for example, if you have a use state hook here, you know, you'd have maybe four use state hooks, they always must execute in the same order. And that may seem like they're obviously always going to execute in the same order. But if you put, for example, a hook inside of an if check that says if this, you know, for example, equals something, you know, whatever your hook check is, and you put up your hook inside of this if check. Now this first hook may run and it may not run. So you're actually going to get errors. We're saying that you cannot put a hook inside of a if check right here, for example, what we have. And we can actually show this by just, if I say if true here and I save this, you see I'm going to get an error that says React hook use state is called conditionally. React hooks must be called in the same exact order in every component render. So luckily React is going to catch these errors for you. So you just need to know that you cannot put hooks inside of if statements. You cannot put them inside of functions. You cannot put them inside of loops. They cannot be nested in anything. They must be at the top level, essentially nothing around them, no blocks, nothing. They're just at the top level of your function, always called in the exact same order. And now if we save, you're going to notice we no longer get any errors because these are all called in the exact same order. So that's the really important things to know about hooks before you start using them. Now that we know that, let's talk about the use state hook and how it maybe compares to the class version of state. So to use the use state hook, all we need to do is just call use state. It's just a function. And the thing that we pass to use state is going to be what the default state is. Let's say that our default state is going to be four, for example. Our counter is going to start at four. And now this use state hook is going to return to us an array of values. So we can just say here, our array is equal to use state. But something important to notice 
is nobody's going to actually write this out as an array. What they're going to do is destructure this in line because useState always returns an array with two values. The very first value in this array is going to be your state. So for example, count. This is going to be our current state at every single iteration of our render function here. The second thing we're going to return is a function which is going to allow us to update our state. So we're just going to call it set count. These you can call whatever you want, it doesn't really matter. You just need to know that the first thing in the array is always the current state, and the second thing is the function that allows you to update that current state. So what we can do now is instead of having zero here, we can just put our count down here. And if we save, you're going to see four is our count over here now because we have that being rendered by our use state and we're putting a default value of four inside of here. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is how you can actually set count. So to do that, let's set up a on click here. We can say on click. This is going to be called decrement count because this is going to remove one from our count. We're just going to call a function decrement count. And all we're going to do is call that set count function, which allows us to update our state. And we're going to pass it our current count minus one. Let's save that and test our minus button. And as you can see, we can now update our count by decreasing it by one. And every time we call this set count or essentially our update function, it's going to re-render our component with the new value for our count, just like would happen with any other set state inside of a class component. When you update the state, your component re-renders. This is the same exact thing with this use state hook. But something important to notice is this is actually the incorrect way to update a value based on the previous value. As you know, if you used class components, there's a second version of your set function, which allows you to pass in a function. And this function actually takes in the previous state value. So in our case, it's going to be our previous count. And what we want to do with our previous count is just subtract one. So now what we're doing is we're taking our previous count and we're subtracting one from it. And if we save, you're going to notice everything works just the same as it did before. But the reason that we're doing this is if we just go back here a little ways to our old version where we just did count minus one, if we were to call set count two times in a row, so we subtract one here and subtract one here, now what should happen is we decrease by two every single time we click. But you're going to notice it still only decreases by one. And the reason for this is that our count value here is just the value of count when we render our function. So we're calling set count of four minus one, which gives us three. And we're calling the exact same thing set count of four minus one, which is three again. They're essentially overwriting each other. But what happens when we use the function version where we have the previous count, we can just do the previous count minus one. And if we did that two times in a row, what happens is our previous count is actually passed into this. So the first time it's four, four minus one is three. And then when the second one gets called, three gets passed in and we get three minus one would give us two. Now, if we check that and click minus, you now see we're properly subtracting by two. So anytime you're modifying state where you actually are using the previous value of your state to create the new value, you need to make sure you use the function version of setting your state, just like if you were setting state inside of a class component, this is the exact same thing. Now let's just delete that second one. We obviously only want to decrement by one. And let's also create our function for incrementing our count. So we'll say increment count. And this is going to do essentially the exact same thing. So we'll just copy this down. But instead, we're going to add one. And down here for our plus, we'll say on click is going to be equal to increment count. Now we can click subtract, we can click plus, and both of these are working as we would expect. Now that is the basic functionality of this use state hook. But there's actually a lot more complexity in use state that you need to understand, especially if you're coming from class components. One thing you know about class components is you actually set the state inside of the constructor. So this value for here, for example, would only ever be ran once because it's inside of our constructor. But with the function component, this value of four gets called every single time we run our function. So if this were, for example, some really complex math, maybe we were, you know, calculating like Fibonacci or something really complex. If that were to keep happening over and over again, every time we rendered our component, it could really slow down the performance of our application. That is why use state actually has two ways to pass in the state. The first way is you just pass the state like this, and it's going to run every time, which when it's just a hard coded value like four, that doesn't matter. But it also takes a function version. And what this does is it runs this function only the very first time your component renders. And we can even show that by just putting a console.log in here that says 
run function and we'll just say return four. So if we save, you can see our default state and everything works as before. But if we inspect our page, I drag this over so we can view our console, you can see run function is only getting run every single time we actually first render the component. So you see, if we clear this out, it doesn't matter how much I change this, that run function is not being ran multiple times. But if I were to come into here, and instead, let's just create a simple function. We'll call it count initial, just like that. And we're going to put the console log run function in here and return four. And now we instead call count initial, whoops, count initial to actually get the initial value. This is going to run every time our component renders. So now you can see if we click plus, every time we're getting that run function being ran every single time our component re-renders. So that's something really important to notice versus when we had it the old way, where if we pass in a function that called count initial instead, now that run function is no longer going to be run every time we re-render our component. So the important thing to notice is that if you are doing something where you have to have really complex, slow computation for your initial state, make sure you use the function version instead so it only ever gets ran one time. Now another important thing to notice is that use state works a little bit differently than the state in class components when dealing with objects. So let's say that we had an object here, for example, we have count, and we're going to default that to four, and then we also had maybe a theme color for some reason. So we're going to set that to blue. And let's just show our theme down here. We'll say theme. And of course, we just need to make sure that we destructure these values out. So we have our state here, and this is just going to be called set state. And then we're going to have our count be equal to state.count. And we're just going to set our theme equal to state.theme. And now if we save, you're going to notice we're getting another error because we're trying to call our set count function right here. Let's just comment these out for now. And we can save. And you're going to notice we have our value of four and then our blue being printed out here. So we have our count as well as our theme. So now if we want to actually decrement our count, we need to call set state. We have our previous state that's being passed in. And what we need to do is come in here and actually return our new value, which is going to be an object, which is just our count, which is going to be previous state dot count plus one. And this is how you would do this in a normal class component. We pass up just the parts we want to change, and then it would update our count here to be now plus one, and our theme would be untouched because we didn't modify it here in our decrement count. But you're going to notice something interesting. When we click minus, you can see uh, if this is actually a minus sign here, let's redraw that. So if we click minus here, you can see our value changed down to three, which is correct, but our theme completely disappeared. And that's because with use state hook, what is happening is whenever we set our state value, it's not merging an object like it would do with set state inside of a class component where it actually just merges this object with our current state. It's actually overwriting all of our old state. So everything inside of our state is being overridden with whatever we pass out down here. So if you do want to use an object, what you need to do is you need to just spread out your previous state and then set your new state. So here we have our previous state, which is just essentially all the values inside of here. And then we're updating our count to be minus one. Now, if we click minus, you can see our count changes, but our value for theme actually does not get modified. So it's really important to notice that if you do use an object inside of your state, that when you update the object, you need to make sure you update it with all the old values as well, because they don't get merged together automatically. And the reason that the automatic merging does not happen is because in general, when you're using state inside of a hook like this, what you're going to want to do is actually have multiple state hooks. So instead of having one state hook here, we would have two. So this first one is going to be for our count and it's going to be for set count. And let's just change our code for decrement back to what it was before, like this. So now if I change this and this and save and come down here and just comment out our theme for now, you can see we have the exact same code we had before. But now if we want to have our theme be added in here, we just create a new use state. We'll default this to blue, for example, call it theme, and we'll call this set theme, just like that. And now if we save, you can see we can modify our count successfully and our theme doesn't get modified because we don't have to worry about our states clashing because we're now using two different hooks to manage our two different types of state. And that's actually one of the biggest benefits of the use state hook is that you can have multiple different pieces of state all broken out 
and it becomes much easier to manage and change, which I really, really like. For example, if we wanted to change our theme when we click the plus button, we could say set count, I'm sorry, set theme. And what we wanna do here is we're just gonna change our theme to be red. So let's say it's set theme to red when we click the plus button. So if we click minus, it changes. When we click plus, we change our theme to red. So that is working all exactly like we wanted to, plus and minus. And we're able to break out these different types of state into their own use state hooks, which is absolutely crucial. And that's all there is to the use state hook. If you enjoyed this, make sure to check out my full React course. I'll link down in the description below. And also, I have a blog article specifically on use state you can check out for more information, also linked in the description down below. Thank you very much for watching and have a good day.